I love fried fish and I love sandwiches, and this is the best way to make a fried fish sandwich. In the cookbook, I describe this as being good for catfish, and I say that only because I've run a ton of channel cats through this same process, yeah. making the same kind of sandwich. But here we're actually using something different. We're using rockfish fillets. Really, any white fleshed fish comes from fresh water, salt water, it is appropriate for this. It really doesn't matter. You kind of want to pay attention to your size. So you want to imagine that when, when you get your fish fried up, you're going to be able to fill a bun pretty nicely. This is a bigger rockfish fillets that we've cut up. And I've cut them two ways. One, you have some tail pieces where it's come off, and also we have some pieces that were pretty thick. So like you got a big thick fillet like that, you can do what's called shaving it and just cut it down into two smaller pieces. Oftentimes with a big piece of catfish, like catfish can taste kind of muddy, especially when you get a big one that's got a fillet like that thick. When I got a fillet like that, I'll take that knife and just run that thing like this and open that up and have two thin fillets and they fry up much nicer. One of the first steps you want to do is we just here we have a little mayonnaise and sriracha and we're gonna make a sauce for the sandwiches. I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. Just let that sit like that. And that's, that's gonna be the sauce that we lay down on the bun. And then we're gonna season all these pieces of fish before breading them. There are a thousand ways to fry fish, and I like you know three or four of them, but this is one of the ways I like to do it. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I have the fish and it's slightly, you know, it's seasoned with salt and pepper on, on the actual fish. So it's not, I don't have the flour or the cornmeal seasoned. I just season the fish with some salt. Then I'm gonna go into flour first. And the fish has a little bit of moisture so the flour sticks. And what doing the flour does is it gives the egg white something to stick to. So I'm gonna go on the egg white and that clings to the flour. Then go into cornmeal. You don't want tons of it on there because it can get kind of burnt and weird. You just want to shake it off, make sure you have a nice coating. I'm lay that right there. You want to work fast because the egg white moisture will wind up soaking through and it just kind of changes the texture of the whole thing. So work pretty quick, get them all done. I got this thing set at 375. They're going to cook, you know, within minutes. But a thing about working with cornmeal, especially as the cornmeal gets coarser and coarser, you want to keep the cornmeal golden brown. You don't want to start having it go into the color of burnt toast. So watch it carefully and don't let that happen. But you do want it to crisp around the edges. So it's kind of like, it's a little more art and science of just observing it. Like I don't put fish in a fryer and then go walk away and just trust a timer to tell me when it's done. I stand here and watch what's happening. All right, the final assembly here is pretty self-explanatory. Got a bun, give yourself a liberal application of the sauce. Sometimes with my kids, you know, if it might be a little bit spicy, I'll just run straight mayo for my kids rather than the mayo and the sriracha. And get yourself a good coating of the fish pieces, onion, tomato, definitely, definitely some pickle. Cap her off. For this recipe and more, get the Meat Eater Fish and Game Cookbook, available just about anywhere books are sold.